Hello guys, this is Adip. Welcome to my channel Movement Science, where I simplify biomechanics with Joe. So if you are new to this channel, consider subscribing. Also check me out on Instagram, where I post pictures of my notes, and the reference time for all the topics that I'm going to cover will be mentioned down in the description. So check that out, and let's get started. this video we are going to learn about the extrinsic finger flexors now this video will be about purely the muscle where they go they attach and how they function together and in the next video we will be learning about the flexor mechanism that means what are the other structures that aid in flexion of your fingers and how all the system the whole flexors and all the supporting structures together work to create flexion right so this video will be purely based on the muscle and how they function together and all the other structures will come slowly in and will build on the topic right so first starting with the muscles these are basically the motors of your fingers they make your fingers move right and these can be divided into two there is the intrinsic and extrinsic now intrinsic muscles they start within your hand like they originate within your hand and then they attach within your hand whereas the extrinsic muscles will come below the wrist like your flexor digitorum profundus and flexor digitorum superficialis these are the only two extrinsic finger flexors that we have the profundus muscle comes from the ulna and also the common flexor origin and the digitorum superficialis muscle comes from your humerus and again from that flexor origin so we are going to focus on the extrinsic finger flexors and intrinsic will come in the later parts of the series so starting with the flexor digitorum profundus it can cause flexion at mcp pip and dip joint so if you can see this blue color right the blue color tendon which is coming it crosses your mcp joint pip joint and also dip joint and attaches distally over here so that's why it is able to create flexion at pip dip and also mcp joint whereas your flexor digitorum superficialis muscle is a primary pip flexor because you can see it crosses the pip joint and attaches to the middle phalanx over here right so it causes flexion at only pip and because it crosses over here at mcp joint it also causes flexion at mcp now among these two the flexor digitorum profundus is a more active muscle if we compare it to the flexor digitorum superficialis whenever we have to create a really strong flexion both the flexor digitorum profundus and superficialis both work together that's what i mentioned here works with fdp the superficialis when high force of flexion is needed whenever we are grasping something really strongly right now the thing about flexor digitorum superficialis is as it is in the name it is a very superficial tendon and hence what will happen the moment arm because it is away from the axis the moment arm will be much higher if you compare it to the profundus and also it crosses lesser joints right it does not cross the dip it crosses fewer joints so the active insufficiency will be much lesser at flexor digitorum superficialis now what is active insufficiency as i mentioned before as your muscle is contracted at one joint it is difficult for the muscle to contract at other joints right so when your wrist is in flexion the finger flexion is really hard because it has already contracted or shortened at one joint so that's what active insufficiency means and this is less because it is crossing fewer joints right so the active insufficiency will be lesser in comparison to your flexor digitorum profundus but in spite of having these two advantages the flexor digitorum profundus is working better at your pip joint now how is that at pip joint what happens is flexor digitorum profundus becomes more superficial compared to your flexor digitorum superficialis and why does this happen this happens because the fds splits okay you can see this red tendon coming and then it splits at your pip joint and attaches to the middle phalanx and where it splits the flexor digitorum profundus which was underneath it comes more superficial and the superficialis which was more superficial because now it has to attach to the bone 
at the middle phalanx it has to go deeper right because the bone is deeper it has to go deeper and the profundus becomes more superficial superficial and this region where it splits and comes on top at the pip joint is called as the camper schiasma and for this reason the flexor digitorum profundus even is if it's a deeper muscle or a deeper deeper tendon or a deeper tendon it is more efficient at the pip joint because it becomes more superficial over here at this region so now i'm going to show you how exactly these tendons come and attach over here so this is your metacarpal proximal middle and distal phalanx right so this blue color is your flexor digitorum profundus which will go and attach to your distal phalanx like this correct and on top of it will be your flexor digitorum superficialis which will come and over here at this chiasma it will split and it will attach to your phalanx over here middle phalanx so that's how your flexor digitorum profundus over here if you can see is more superficial compared to your flexor digitorum superficialis at the pip joint correct this is your pip joint and the chiasma happens over here and this is how the attachment happens so now looking at this you might think it is crossing the flexor digitorum profundus is causing mcp pip and dip joint and it is causing flexion right so why do we need the flexor digitorum superficialis at all it can just the profundus can cause flexion at all the fingers and can function really well why do we need the superficialis now this is where the beauty comes in anything that is present in our body is never gone at waste it's there for a particular reason right and that's how the life works that's how the evolution works so the flexor digitorum superficialis is important to balance the pip flexion what do i mean by this you can see the pip joint over here right and it causes flexion at pip the flexor digitorum superficialis on its own right and digitorum profundus causes flexion at pip but it also causes at dip now when we are doing a forceful pinch okay during a forceful pinch what will happen if the flexor digitorum superficialis is not there the pinch will look something like this there won't be any flexion at your pip joint there will be just flexion at your dip this is how the pinch will look like and this is very inefficient if you compare it to this you can compare it this okay with pip in extension versus this with pip in flexion and this is much more efficient and this pip flexion that is that causes the balance and creates a very efficient movement the pinch movement or the pinch hold is provided only with the activity of your flexor digitorum superficialis it avoids your extension at pip joint and this is the major role that flexor digitorum superficialis plays so now we have seen how flexor digitorum profundus and superficialis work together what are their pros and cons and how they are attached and what movement they bring about now there is another small thing that we have to add to this that is the wrist movement now we all know that active and passive insufficiency that is basically the position of your wrist will directly affect the function of your fingers and that's what i mentioned over here the flexor digitorum profundus and superficialis are dependent on the wrist position for optimal length tension relationship if the muscle is stretched right the flexors are stretched over here they can function really well right the length and the tension that they can create are directly dependent that relationship is what we are talking about whereas if wrist is in flexion and then we are trying to create flexion at the fingers it's very difficult right so this length tension relationship is very important now if these extensor muscles weren't there what would have happened the finger flexors would have started acting right and there is nothing to hold the wrist back in this position as your fingers finger flexors would contract there would be flexion at the wrist because nothing is holding your wrist back and it would have not been a very efficient movement that's why in our body we have wrist extensors which will stabilize your wrist and hence we can create really strong finger flexion movement with the help of this counterbalancing extensor torque that is created at the wrist so your wrist position is very important to maintain the length tension relationship and this happens the functioning of the fdp and fds are dependent on your counterbalancing extensor torque 
which is created by your wrist at ECRB and EDC that is extensor carpi radialis brevis and extensor digitorum communis. These extensors play a major role in proper functioning of your finger flexors, right? So what we understand from this is basically your active insufficiency plays a major role when you are holding something really tight. Also, when you want to grasp something really hard, right? Also, the passive sufficiency can work here. That is, your extensors of the wrist and extensors of the fingers won't let you bend completely. So they are not letting you completely contract because of the passive insufficiency and the finger flexors are not able to generate enough force because of the active insufficiency. So the balance of both active and passive insufficiency that is maintaining the wrist in the right position and creating the right amount of finger flexion force is the best combination to generate the optimum force and work efficiently. But if you go to see, we don't really stop here. The finger flexors and extensors are supported by a bunch of more connective tissues. There are bursas, there are pulleys, which we are going to talk about in the future videos. So stay tuned for that. Now let's quickly summarize. What did we see? We saw the extrinsic finger flexors, the profundus and superficialis muscle. The superficialis works at PIP and MCP, whereas the profundus works at MCP, PIP and DIP. The profundus becomes more superficial at PIP joint at campus chiasma, whereas the superficialis creates PIP joint flexion, which helps in a very strong pinch hold, which is very efficient, right? We also saw how the wrist position, activity of wrist extensors is very important for efficient functioning of your finger flexors, right? So with that, we finish off this topic. That's all for today, guys. Thank you for watching. If you like my content, please like, share and subscribe to the channel. It will really help me out. And thank you for watching.